Okay, everybody, today what I'm going to do in this video is uh, give you a brief introduction to setting up your portfolio using uh, Commons on Marymount's website. Uh, Commons is a blog site for Marymount students and faculty and staff. It is based in WordPress. And WordPress is a pretty much industry-wide standard for any kind of blogging platform, uh, but it's also used for developments of non-blog sites, um, websites in general. Uh, it's a template-based site that allows you easily to change the way things look. So I'm going to sort of take a, a bit of time to show you how to set something up on WordPress, and then I'll have another video uh, or two for you to help you develop your theme and um, do some more complex uh, um, updates okay, with your blog. So uh, right now where we are is in the commons.marymount.edu site. Okay? So that's where you wanna go to find your blog. You can also access it, I believe, through my marymount.edu. Uh, so the thing you want to look for is this URL, commons.marymount.edu, okay? Now, um, when you go here, commons.marymount.edu, uh, you will see this web page, okay? Um, in order to create a blog, there are a couple things that you want to do. Uh, you can access this in a couple of different ways, but the first thing you have to do is log in, okay? So the login button is right up here at the top. Okay, log in, right? I'm gonna click that, and it's gonna take you to the login screen, and you use your Marymount MUID, okay? Um, I've updated my account uh, password since I remembered it on Commons. So uh, I've logged in now, and um, now you'll notice that a few things look a little bit different, okay? Up here, you've got a little uh, sort of navigation bar with this WordPress logo about Marymount Commons. You've got um, a bunch of houses stacked on top of each other that takes you to all the sites that you have created. And then you've got a main Marymount Commons page. You may not have this actually. Um, um, I may have it because I'm, uh, we, I help set, set the thing up. But, um, but if you don't have it, that's fine. Um, you'll just have the, the About Marymount Commons and this is the important one, the My Sites, okay? The other thing I want you to notice is on the other side of the screen, you have your username, okay? And uh, this has all the stuff that is of use to you, like profile, information on groups, settings, all sorts of stuff, okay? So um, when you're up here, also notice this Sites button, okay? Which will allow you to also create a site or list the number of sites that you have, okay? So there are two ways to create a site. Okay? One is to go here to Sites, My Sites, and then Create a Site. Okay? That's one option. And the other is um, to go to blogs, okay, here in this navigation pane, blogs. And they both will take you to the same place, okay? So if I click blogs, it will take me to a list of um, blogs that are currently in existence, and it will give me this little button that says create a site, okay? And if you click create a site, it'll take you to this page, okay? Um, you can also get to that very same page by going to Sites and Create a Site. Right. Sites and Create a Site. Okay, so it's the same exact page. Doesn't matter how you get there, it takes you to the same place. Um, all right, so when you're setting up a site, it's pretty simple to do. Um, you have to give your site, site a name and a title, and these are different, okay? The title is something you can very easily change later, so don't worry too much about that. But the name is something you will not be able to change later, okay? Um, so I wanna create a site, um, and this is gonna be part of the site address, okay? So I'm gonna call it something like how portfolio, 
Okay, and I'm gonna give it a title like my writing portfolio, okay? Here is a button, radio button options for privacy if you want your site to appear in search engines, public listings around the network, um, or not, okay? Uh, this doesn't really seem to be too much of, a, of an issue, um, but when you go to the site directory um, for Marymount Commons, um, your site, if you check yes, will appear there. If you check no, it won't appear there. Um, so that's up to you. You can learn a little bit more about that if you like. And then you click Create Site. Okay. Now, I have a problem here. Okay, You might in yourself have a problem uh, when you create your site. Uh, be sure that your site name has only lowercase letters and numbers. Okay, so this hyphen is a problem for me. Okay, you can't have spaces either, so you have to mush it together like this. Okay, how portfolio. Okay, so I've removed it. Let me try to create the site again. All right, there we go. I have registered a new site. Okay, here is the address to my site. All right, um, commons.marymount.edu slash how portfolio. So you notice that that site name that I gave it, okay, is part of the URL. So now this is the address that you give anybody um, if you want them to see your site, okay? Uh, so you can create your site as a regular web page. Um, it doesn't have to be a blog. And what I'm gonna do is show you how to create a regular web page using WordPress, not a blog, though I will um, sort of in this, the rest of this video sort of just give you an overview of um, the dashboard and the kinds of things you can do and where stuff is, okay? Um, so when you go to, uh, when you go to your site, okay, this is the default theme. It's not anything fancy. Uh, it, they, just, they just give you a theme, okay? They also populate it with a post and a page and a comment and a few other things, right? Just so that you can sort of see how it how it works. This doesn't look very, very helpful for us right now. It's a little confusing, okay? Um, but let's go and take a look at the dashboard, okay? So here you are in your site. Um, and remember, you can also access this by going to My Sites and clicking My Writing Portfolio. And here's the dashboard here. You can also do quick things like um, these things, uh, these options, creating a new post, managing comments, visiting sites from here. Um, the most, the easiest thing to do is just to go to my writing portfolio and go to your dashboard. This is the place where you want to kind of really spend a little bit of time getting to know how WordPress works in the dashboard. Don't try, um, shortcuts or easy modes or any kind of uh, backdoor things, right, uh, at this point, because you really want to learn how all of this stuff works, okay? So here's your dashboard. This is where you control everything that goes on in your blog, okay? Um, it'll give you a little bit of information about recent activity. It'll give you a space to do a quick draft of a post, okay, not a, not a page, um, and a few other options, okay? Ignore easy mode up here. I'm telling you right now, ignore it for the time being, okay? <laughs> Once you know how to, all this stuff works, then you can use easy mode. All right, uh, you've got a list of sites. There's some video tutorials here, okay? So if you click that, that's gonna be really useful for you. This one in particular, pages versus posts, is something I'm gonna ask you to watch later, okay? Um, so pages versus posts is an important um, concept in creating a WordPress site and you will need to know the difference. I'll explain it, but this is a video that I'm also gonna ask you to watch. Okay. Uh, posts, this is where you go to add posts, to see all your new posts, to, to develop categories for your posts and tags. Categories and tags are another thing that you will want to uh, make sure you understand, okay? Um, and there's probably a video tutorial about that too. Uh, but for the time being, um, this is where the posts are. Here's where you go to see all of your posts. Okay, here's our Hello World post, the one that was pre-populated. Um, if you want to um, add a new post, go to see your categories, etc. One of the things you might notice is that uh, this menu expanded when we uh, clicked on all posts, okay? Um, all right, so now we've got uh, media here. This is for any media, sound, images, video, that sort of thing that you wanna upload. Uh, this is really great for if you are a visual artist and uh, you want to create a portfolio of your visual materials. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how to develop a theme for that as well. 
um, pages. This is going to be important for us. Okay. Um, it looks a lot like the posts page, you know, the posts dashboard um, widget, but if you click all posts, um, it'll bring you a list of all of the posts that you have. Here's our sample page. Now this is a sample page, not a sample post. Okay. Um, so we'll talk more a little bit about that in a sec. Here you can add a new one fairly quickly. Um, comments, if anybody comments on your pages, this is where you go to moderate that sort of stuff. Um, you can also set it, um, set, manipulate the settings if you don't want anybody to comment on your materials. And that is all here in the settings, okay? Um, appearance, this is a really important page um, uh, that I'm going to spend a little bit of time on later. You have options about uh, related to customizing your theme, adding widgets or little um, um, functional kind of components to your blog. Uh, you can create menus. This will also be really important for us, so stay tuned for that. Here's where you also change the header if you need to, if your theme allows it, and background. You can also do that in the customize um, point of, of entry. Um, plugins, we're not really too concerned about this, but if you, um, if you want to um, activate any of these plugins on your site, then you can do so. Um, video sidebar widgets, for instance, uh, adding a subscribe by email plugin. And these all then become widgets that you add to your theme here. Okay. But we'll talk about that later. That's more advanced. Okay. Users, if you want to add somebody as a subscriber or you want to add a collaborator to help you write your posts, um, this is where you would do it. We're not going to worry too much about that right now. Um, tools, uh, this is useful because one of the things you can do is export your site here. This is one of the things that makes WordPress so useful uh, because you can easily package your site up in Marymount Commons, export it, and then you can import it into any other WordPress-based site, okay? So that means you, the work that you do here in your Commons site for Marymount, you can take that with you after you graduate, okay? You just export it and then you import it into the next WordPress site, okay? There might be a few things that you'll need to sort of fix, but, um, but all the content will be there, okay? And settings, this is another really important place to take a look at, okay? Um, WordPress is set up to um, offer you a few general settings, and then these are really interesting, the writing and reading sections. Um, the general settings will give you information like your site title. Remember, we filled this out when we created our site. Um, you can change it here. If you have a tagline, um, this is the default, but you probably want to change this or put nothing there, right? Um, the, let's see. Um, so it's kind of like a subtitle, right? Here's your title and here's your subtitle. You don't have to put anything in there though if you don't want to. Um, you can set your date format, okay, and your time format and uh, where the week starts on. This is particularly helpful if you blog, okay? Um, if you write regular posts on your blog that you want people to read, okay, they will be time and date stamped and um, this will be useful for you if you do that. Always save any changes that you make, okay? A few other things to look at here are your writing uh, settings and your reading settings. So the writing settings, um, there's some formatting options. If you want to convert emoticons to graphics on display, that's default checked. You can uncheck it. Um, if you want uh, HX, sorry, XHTML to be um, corrected automatically, you can check this. I don't, I wouldn't worry about it default post category and default post format. Um, we're not really going to be worried too much about this because we're using this as a static web page, not a blog. Okay. This is useful for blogs, okay? but you save changes if you make any. Reading is another important settings um, component. This determines how people engage with your site, how they see it. Okay. So this is super important. Is your homepage going to display your latest posts if you're doing a blog? or is it gonna display a static web page, okay? And then you select that below, okay? So I'll come back to this and uh, show you how to manipulate this once we have some sample pages and posts to really work with, okay? Uh, but remember that uh, posts and pages are very, very different, okay? And if you want to have a regular web page that doesn't look like a blog, then you use, you wanna keep that in mind. Okay, you're working with pages, not posts. Okay, so the page set, the set reading settings here dis, dis, displays 
or determines how people who visit your site, how they encounter it, okay? Um, there are a few other things here that you can uh, develop if you want to have a login for specific pages, right? Um, you Or if you want to have a password, um, if you want to keep your work private, uh, you, can, um, you can set those things here. Okay? Remember to save any changes that you make. Okay? Uh, there are a few other things here. Discussion, this is where you set, uh, um, you set settings that are related to comments. Okay? So if you want to um, allow anybody to post comments on new articles, right, if or not, um, you know, there are a few things that, um, that you want to take a real good look at here because um, you do have the possibility of getting spam, okay, um, with this. So, so be careful. Um, make sure that you take a look at these discussion settings and save any changes that you make, okay? So these are the basic features of the, um, the dashboard. Uh, settings you definitely want to take a good look at. And we're also going to spend a little bit of time here under appearance, okay? 